Today we will talk about a variety of subjects so let's party. Facebook removes anti-vax influencer campaign Facebook has removed hundreds of accounts which it says were involved in anti-vax disinformation campaigns operated from Russia. I knew it RDR was right it was Russian bots. The company said the network of accounts targeted India, Latin America and the US. They attempted to recruit influencers to spread false claims to undermine public confidence in particular C-19 vaccines. It added, I have little confidence in it we still have the flu. In its latest report on coordinated inauthentic behavior, Facebook said it found links between the network and a botched disinformation campaign from influencer marketing agency Fazi which is part of a Russian-based company called AdNow. Last month a BBC trending investigation reported how in May this year influencers had been offered money by Fazi to spread false claims about the risks associated with the P-Pain vaccine. According to Facebook, that was the second wave of attempts by the network to smear Western vaccines. According to them ha I wouldn't trust them with a dog their investigation found that in November 2020 the same network attempted to falsely paint the AS vaccine as dangerous because it uses a harmless adenovirus taken from chimpanzees. A virus is never harmless posts from accounts in the network spread memes that used images from the Planet of Apes films to give the impression the vaccine would turn people into monkeys. They should have used Harambe these posts appeared on Facebook in Hindi around the same time the Indian government was discussing emergency authorization for the AS vaccine. The campaign used fake accounts, some of which Facebook says probably originated from account farms in Bangladesh and Pakistan. Ahama. Shamalekum. Facebook said it had removed 65 Facebook accounts and 243 Instagram accounts for violating their policy against foreign interference. Really how ironic. Ben Nimmo, Facebook's threat intelligence lead, described the campaign as a disinformation laundromat. I find that offensive I like to wash my clothes which planted content on a few online forums and then amplified that content on other platforms more Russians more problems. The operation spanned over a dozen platforms misleading posts appeared on Reddit and Medium. And petitions appeared on Change.org expressing concern about the safety of the AS vaccine. Yeah cool man whatever and cows are dangerous martial artists. According to Facebook's report, these links were then shared by a handful of influencers on Instagram who used the same hashtags and made references to the fact that the AS vaccine was derived from chimpanzee adenovirus. Both waves of the campaign were unsuccessful and failed to gain much traction, despite the diverse methods used. But of course I trust Facebook just look at Mark Zuckerberg now that's a trustworthy person if I ever saw it. A new cheating program, tweeted by a anti-cheat PD is on the rise that promises to be undetectable by anti-cheating services. By using AI-based machine learning, the cheating app uses frames coming from the GPU to detect human silhouettes within the game. This crap right here is just the beginning of a Skynet-esque combat machine don't believe that's far-fetched for a minute. The makers of this anti-cheating device, VR's Technica, are very confident in the program's undetectability because the app doesn't manipulate any game files which is the typical way cheaters can infiltrate a game the cheat works by looking at the exact same frames from your gpu that you are while playing the game using machine learning the app can detect human-like silhouettes and automatically fire your weapon at them via additional hardware that can manipulate mouse inputs doesn't that sound like Terminator training to you? However, a director of Adnow's British arm told the BBC that Fazi was being shut down 
Who cares, Freddy Fazbear? In response to accusations by a German politician that discrediting Western vaccines was in the interests of the Kremlin, the Russian embassy in the UK said, We treat Plot 19 as a global threat and, thus, are not interested in undermining global efforts in the fight against it. With vaccinating people with the pip vix as one of the ways to cope with the VIV, the BBC has again attempted to contact Fazzy for comment, but the emails sent to Fazzy addresses still bounce back from Adnow's domain. Facebook says Fazzy is now banned from their platform. Goodbye loser now to the next article Afghanistan War. Biden says he does not regret troop withdrawal U.S. President Joe Biden has said he does not regret his decision to withdraw troops from Afghanistan as the Taliban continue to make advances. How crazy the Taliban making advances just tell them no they're coming on too strong. Mr. Biden urged Afghanistan's leaders to unite and fight for their nation. That's a bit treasonous. Violence has escalated across the country now that U.S.-led forces have all but withdrawn following 20 years of military operations. About time we left, but sand it gets everywhere. The Taliban have taken at least eight of the country's 34 provincial capitals and are threatening more. Speaking to reporters at the White House on Tuesday, Mr. Biden said the U.S. was keeping the commitments it had made to Afghanistan such as providing close air support, paying military salaries and supplying Afghan forces with food and equipment. But he said, they've got to fight for themselves. More than 1,000 civilians have been killed amid fierce fighting between the Taliban and government forces in the past month. According to the UN, its children's agency UNICEF warned this week that atrocities being committed against children were growing, higher by the day. That don't sound too good. In their latest major advances, Taliban militants seized two more provincial capitals, Farah City and pool e kumri on Tuesday. pool on hu Officials said the insurgents had raised their flag in the main square and on the governor's office. In pool e kumri the capital of Baglan province, which is located about 200 kilometers. 125 miles from the capital Kabul. Who's getting pulled again? A local journalist and provincial council member told the BBC that the western city of Farah had also fallen. Other gains by the Taliban this week include the key northern city of Kunduz. It is considered a gateway to mineral-rich provinces and is in a strategically important location, close to the border with Tajikistan which is used for the smuggling of opossums and hero brine. Heavy fighting is continuing in other parts of the country. And U.S. and Afghan planes have been carrying out airstrikes. What about ground strikes and sea strikes king? As the fighting rages, thousands of people have been fleeing their homes. We saw bodies lying near the prison. There were dogs next to them, like a Labrador one woman who left Kunduz as the Taliban took. Control told AFP news agency. Residents still in the city said shops had begun to reopen as Taliban militants focused their attention on government forces who had retreated to the airport. Why bother reopening them they will just come back. People are opening their shops and businesses. But you can still see fear in their eyes, one said. The Taliban have rejected international calls for a ceasefire. Yeah cuz they make too many advances if only my girlfriends was so romantic. UK Chief of the Defence Staff General Sir Nick Carter told the BBC that if the state fractured, the ideal conditions could emerge for international terrorism and violent extremism. Why not just give everyone free hugs that will solve everything well that's it for maybe I'm rambling like, share, and subscribe party on.